Hello everyone, I am Dr. Wen Tang Li from Shin Kong Wu Hosu Memorial Hospital. This time, I will demonstrate how to perform a lumbar puncture. First, before we assess the lumbar puncture, we need to evaluate why a lumbar puncture is necessary. Lumbar puncture is primarily used to assess the condition of cerebrospinal fluid. Whether it's cytology or infection of the cerebrospinal fluid, or you might need intrathecal drug therapy. All these can be achieved through lumbar puncture. First, we will help you get positioned, and then use a fingernail to make a mark. Please let us know anytime if you feel uncomfortable. In principle, we will try to extend from the iliac crest, as much as possible, toward the body's midline, and perpendicular to the patient's spine. At the intersection to find a correct positioning spot, ideally at the L4 per liter 5 or L3 per liter 4 junction. Sometimes, you can also check the patient's cub, CT, or MRI beforehand. In every spinal alignment of the patient, needle insertion site selection may still require some adjustments. We will make a mark here as a reference point for the operator to insert the needle. We will give you some local anesthetic here so it won't be so uncomfortable when you get the spinal needle. This infection must be thorough from the center outward in a circular pattern. After all, this is an invasive examination, so a septic technique is very important. The disinfection area can be slightly larger, so that after you lay down the drape, the margin of error is more ideal. In a moment, give me sterile gloves, and then the drape and treatment cloth should also be positioned. This step mainly involves the technique of wearing sterile gloves. Please ensure not to touch the sterile surface, including your own sterile gloves, exposed parts should also not be touched. The drape placement is like this. The marks made earlier are very important, because you need to ensure the drape's position, the marked spot, must be right at the center of the drape. Having a mark, guide, will make it clearer, because there have been incidents where the drape was not placed correctly. You think the position of the drape is the center, but actually, from the real needle entry point, it's quite far off. Once the target is off, your subsequent targets will be increasingly off. This is not good for the patient and can also cause trouble for yourself. We expand the sterile field as much as possible until the sterile field is sufficient for you to operate. This is a needle for lumbar puncture. This glass capillary tube itself, its main function includes measuring the intracranial pressure, ICP, before and after. Here at Shin Kong Hospital, capillary tubes must be retracted after use and undergo cleaning and disinfection. If some patients are suspected of having Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, CJD, then it's a different case. Suspected CJD patients cannot reuse capillary tubes. The patient is not such a case, so it's okay. This is a scaled capillary tube, about 20 centimeters tall, for you to measure intracranial pressure. This is what's called a three-way, with corresponding valve positions. One end is connected to the patient's puncture site, one end to the capillary tube, and one end is for collecting the sample. You can rotate the valve to the position you want. In a moment, I'll give you some pain relief, I'll tell you before I do it. Before that, make sure the relative position hasn't shifted, find the appropriate entry point before proceeding with the injection. First, pull back a little bit to make sure there is no blood return, then the needle can go deeper. We will slightly swell the skin here, it will hurt a bit, please bear with it. Adjust the direction of the needle as needed to ensure all surrounding tissues are anesthetized. While injecting, push the anesthetic in, adjusting according to the patient's skin depth and thickness. The goal is to achieve full local anesthetic effect, reducing the pain when the lumbar puncture needle is inserted. That's enough for now, it will feel a bit swollen. While waiting for the anesthetic to take effect, let's talk a bit about the lumbar puncture needle. That's the lumbar puncture needle, there's a stiff needle and a guiding needle, the inner needle is the guiding needle, the outer is the stiff needle. This can actually be separated. One is the guiding needle, the other is the stiff needle. Before using, make sure to check, the guiding needle and the stiff needle must be locked together. Do not put the needle in without locking it first. You have to lock it before you can put it in. Make sure to double check the final position before finalizing the needle entry, as the patient's skin can shift slightly. The final needle entry position, there will still be some differences from the preset. 
Make sure the needle entry point is located in the middle of the spinous process. Okay, this position should be about right. After needle insertion, go in while looking for the subarachnoid space. Stabilizing the needle entry point is critical to the success of the operation. The needle should not be pulled out, but can be adjusted within the tissue. If the needle hits bone, it means you need to back off, and then adjust the needle entry height appropriately. If the needle successfully penetrates the dura mater, you can feel the change in resistance. At this point, you can remove the guiding needle and see if any cerebrospinal fluid flows out. If the patient tells you there's a bit of soreness, it means the needle is probably close to the subarachnoid space. At this time, you can also remove the guiding needle and check for cerebrospinal fluid flow. It seems the flow of cerebrospinal fluid is slow, but the needle tip is still in place. Now, first fix the three-way valve. Next, make sure it doesn't flow out from another end. The valve must also be closed correspondingly. We'll open this end to facilitate connection to the capillary tube to measure intracranial pressure beforehand. One hand is responsible for stabilizing the successfully positioned puncture needle to prevent needle movement while turning the three-way. After connecting the three-way, you can start measuring the pressure using the capillary tube. Pay attention to changes in the liquid level height, this part might take some time. While waiting, let's talk a bit. Generally, before collecting a sample, intracranial pressure is measured first. Whether it's a general lumbar puncture or decompression therapy, some people, like those with new cryptococcal cerebrospinal fluid infections, measure intracranial pressure before decompression. At this time, you need to measure both before and after pressures. Sometimes when the before pressure is very high, one tube is not enough, sometimes a second tube is used. If that's the case, then why does the lumbar puncture kit in Shinkong Hospital only give three glass capillary tubes? That's because in most cases, intracranial pressure is normally released, and the after pressure usually doesn't exceed 20 centimeters, which is the height of one tube. So this design is intentional. Another reminder when measuring intracranial pressure with a capillary tube. Remember one thing, do not reuse it. Because the capillary action makes water pressure easily affected by air, further affecting the measurement result and causing inaccuracies. So, do not reuse used tubes, it will cause errors in measurements. The liquid level seems to have reached a balance, it is not rising anymore. There are several divisions 1.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, so the before pressure is about 5 cm water column high. Then don't waste this tube. Here's a tip, the sample remaining in the tube, can still be kept in a sterile test tube. Every drop of cerebrospinal fluid from the patient is very important. Press the index finger against the capillary tube, place it into a sterile test tube, then remove the finger. Used capillary tubes should not be reused. During the cerebrospinal fluid collection process, please ensure aseptic technique. If an assistant helps you hand over the tubes, they should also perform aseptic techniques to avoid contamination. The sample collection process also takes some time, the required time depends on the patient's cerebrospinal fluid flow rate. Sometimes it takes relatively longer, so please be patient. One hand is responsible for stabilizing the successfully positioned puncture needle, to prevent needle movement while turning the three-way. Finally, don't forget to measure the after pressure, use another capillary tube for the measurement work. We have just successfully extracted the cerebrospinal fluid, and measured both before and after pressures. Now, let's introduce intrathecal drug injection. For patients who need intrathecal drug injection therapy, this method can be used for treatment. This case involves a lymphoma patient, undergoing intrathecal injection of MTX, the drug is corrosive so wear appropriate protective equipment to prevent chemical burns. In the process, we still need to confirm the position again. First, observe the cerebrospinal fluid flow rate, whether it is as stable as at the beginning. We will first inject the needle with chemotherapy, another one is steroids. 
While administering, the left hand should assist in stabilizing the puncture needle, not letting the needle position shift. After confirming the cerebrospinal fluid flow rate is okay, we carefully screw the tube on to lock it securely. The first thing we do is pull back to ensure there is no resistance. The purpose is to ensure that the medication can enter the cerebrospinal fluid. Then we carefully push the medication forward, the speed will be as slow as possible. Because pushing the medication too quickly can cause local discomfort for the patient. Usually, just one hand can do it very smoothly, not much force is needed. It's completely different from the force used in general local anesthesia, intrathecal injection in this part must be very gentle. You can use a very slow speed, go forward two small divisions, pull back one small division, or go forward three pull back one, back and forth to push this medication. The goal is for the medication to gently and fully mix into the cerebrospinal fluid. When the medication is about to be injected completely, pay attention to the remaining part. Do not inject air into the cerebrospinal fluid along with it. Whether you complete the intrathecal injection or the cerebrospinal fluid drainage. After measuring the after pressure, also please definitely join the small needle, guiding needle, into the large needle to proceed with the sealing. Next, please definitely and carefully pull both the large needle and the small needle, guiding needle, out. And cover it with a gauze, then apply appropriate pressure to stop the bleeding. After completion, also please let the patient lie flat. It's recommended to let the patient lie flat for at least 1 to 2 hours, if the situation permits, it can be extended to 4 hours. Make sure that the subsequent patient's puncture part can safely stop bleeding, without any leakage or bleeding. That's all about an examination and treatment of cerebrospinal fluid, and a technical demonstration of lumbar puncture. I am Dr. Wen Teng Li, see you next time.